Hello, this is Dr. Gay, and this is a video for all you parents out there who have kids who play sports. You know pretty regularly they have injuries, and you wonder, gosh, what am I supposed to do with this injury? Is it uh, something serious? Should they go back to sports? Should they push through the pain? And so even the greatest orthopedic surgeons struggle to know what the right thing to do is because the symptoms are so nonspecific. A lot of times kids just have an injury, and you don't even see what happened out on the field, and they have knee swelling and pain, but uh, almost all the injuries have knee swelling and pain, so they're very nonspecific. And so without an MRI, you're really wondering whether or not they should stay off it for a while, or if it can heal itself, or if it's not going to heal itself, and they need to have surgery sooner than later. So MRI is a critical thing to evaluate sports injuries. Now this is probably the most common thing we see. This is a tear of the meniscus. So this is a side view of the knee, up here, this round area, this is called the femoral condyle. This is the medial side or inner side, medial femoral condyle. And below this is the tibial plateau, this horizontal band. So tibia and femur. You can see the femur is round, tibia is flat. And between those, you see this little wedge. This is called the medial meniscus. Here's the front of it, and here's the back of it. This is called the posterior horn, and here's the anterior horn. And the meniscus should be nice and uniform and dark. But if we look over on this view here, this is a torn meniscus. You see this obliquely oriented band of bright brightness that goes down to the under surface, the bottom of the meniscus. So this is an oblique tear within the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. Now sometimes this meniscus fragment down here can flip out and get caught in a funny place and then the knee will lock and it will become unstable. And most of the time we just see it torn and the knee will swell and have achy pain in the knee. And the meniscus tears, depending on where they are, they may not heal. If it's in the outer half, the outer third or maybe third to half of the meniscus, depending on the age, there's a blood supply out there and it can heal. So if it's out here in the periphery, but if it's in the inner third or even to the inner half here, the meniscus has no blood supply there and it won't heal. So uh, if you see a tear, it, it may require the surgeon to go in and trim off the tear and clean it up and get them back out there. Now here's the worst of the injuries. This is called an ACL tear. So the anterior cruciate ligament is this oblique band here, this dark uh, area of darkness. It comes from the back of the femur. This is the femur. This is the back of the femur, and it comes obliquely down towards the front of the tibia. So here's the tibia down below. We're looking from the side. So in the side view, you can see the patella, or the kneecap up here in front. And this is what a normal ACL looks like, nice dark black band that comes obliquely down here. It's outlined by a little bit of white stuff here, a little bit of fluid. So this patient had a joint effusion, but their ACL was intact. Now, on this view, you can see that there is no ACL. We don't see that linear uh, band. Instead, we just see fog with this edema and hemorrhage um, within the joint and a lot of white stuff here. This is all complex fluid and blood. So this is an ACL tear. And patients feel a pop in the knee, and they um, require surgery. These will not heal. And when uh, you're a young person, they usually like to have the ACL reconstructed so the patient has instability, and they don't develop arthritis, and they won't have that instability. So... This is a really critical um, thing to find an MRI so you can get the appropriate treatment. And sometimes patients can have really high-grade partial tears. And on physical examination, the surgeon will push the tibia forward and it will stop in normal position because some of the fibers are intact, but it's very weak and limited, and they should stay off sports till they heal. And so, it, again, it can be very helpful to have the MRI to know what to do and make a good decision. Now this is called a medial collateral ligament tear. So the medial collateral ligament is this band. It comes across the medial side of the knee joint. This is the femur up top, tibia down below. You can see this little wedge here. This is the lateral meniscus. This little wedge is the medial meniscus. And this goes over the top of the medial meniscus, and it comes from the femur to the tibia. It's a nice thin uh, black band here. And on this view, you can see this one is torn. So the medial collateral ligament comes up. And it's torn right up here on the femoral side. They can be torn up here, sometimes at the, side, at the joint, and rarely down below the knee joint. Usually it's up in this area. And when they have the tear the medial collateral ligament, they have medial-sided pain. And it seems just like a meniscus tear because the meniscus is on the medial side as well. And this is a good thing to have because it can heal itself. So the kid does not have to have surgery. And the even when they're completely torn from what I've been told, they can heal themselves. So this is a favorable diagnosis. It hurts and it looks terrible on MRI, but they can um, uh, return to a complete uh, normal uh, person without having to undergo surgery or any, anything significant.
Now this is called a transient patellar dislocation. This is the fourth most common thing I see. And so this is a patellar of the kneecap. Now we're looking at this straight on. This uh, V is the central part of the patella. And it should sit right here in the central part of the femur. It glides along in this little trough called the trochlea. Here's the femur, patella. Now sometimes the patella can flip out laterally and it'll tear this band here. This is called the medial retinaculum. And the medial retinaculum holds the patella at the midline. You have a lateral retinaculum, medial retinaculum. And the medial retinac retinaculum will tear. The patella will dislocate out laterally and it'll pop back to normal position. So it's just a transient patellar dislocation. So this is a view of a knee after a transient patellar dislocation has hap uh, happened. So the patella has popped out and when it popped out, it banged this patellar apex, the central part of the patella, or this, usually it's the medial side. It will bang into over here on the bone, actually sometimes way over here, and it will shear off a hunk of cartilage sometimes. Sometimes I have a, a minimal fracture along the patellar side, and usually have a big bony injury over here in the femur. And these patients are usually treated conservatively, except for if they have a displaced fragment. Sometimes they have a big chunk of cartilage that's floating around in there. The surgeon will have to take that out. Uh, but most of the time, it'll pop back to normal position. They have a minor injury that doesn't require too much. Um, and so this is called a transient patellar dislocation. And the last thing is called jumper's knee. So this is an injury, uh, repetitive microtrauma of the patellar tendon. So this is a side view. This is the femur. This is the tibia. This is that anterior cruciate ligament we saw earlier coming down. This is intact, kind of thin, but intact. And this is the, called the quadriceps tendon. The quadriceps uh, attaches to all the thigh muscles. They blend together to form this quadriceps tendon and it attaches to the top of the patella. The patellar tendon comes off the bottom here. And what happens in people who do lots of jumping, like volleyball players, basketball players, they have repetitive tr uh, traction right there where the patellar tendon attaches, and just, they, tra they have traction injury. Again, repetitive microtrauma, tug, tug, tugs right there. And what happens is this. The deep fibers centrally will have uh, little micro tears that will grow bigger over time. They have pain and redness and swelling in the anterior knee just below the patella. Usually it's not completely torn, it just is irritated and partially torn. And with rest and proper treatment, they can go ahead and come back to 100% and it does not require surgery. So this is another one that's not bad. These are the five most common things I see in the practice in kids who play sports.